Hey. <laughs> Take one. Have a breath mint. I'm going to have my breath mint. Good morning. <laughs> I wonder if people can smell breath through the internet. Can you smell my morning breath? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's Saturday. What's it up with you? It is very much Saturday. It's Saturday and it's officially... Launch day. Oh, yeah. Launch day. Launch day. Yeah, read, I don't know if like they can read it. I'm it's training, backwards. It's backwards. That's right. It says training like an astronaut. It's launch day for NASA and SpaceX. That's right. Hey. It's a big day. Yeah. So. And it's officially summer in Arizona. We're hitting... It is. 200 degrees today. 200. <laughs> Divided by two. <laughs> 150. 150. Yes. Yeah. It's officially summer in Arizona. Consistent 100s now. That's it. Right? Yeah. Welcome to the yeah. desert. How's everybody's week going? Hi, Erica. We see you, girl. Um, hey, Erica, what's up? Yeah, how's everybody's week going? We'd like to know. And Mine's I also, good. It, it is? Yes. Good. You better say. You better say that. So, um, I would like to start this one off as we've done before um, with something that we're thankful for and a win that we had this week. So, a good win for us. You me, handle that. Uh, me handle this? Yeah, I'll handle ahead. this. So, a good wi a win for us on the DOS team is we are getting a uh, relationship podcast started. So we're really excited about that. So stay tuned. We'll have that going soon and we'll um, give you more details as they roll out. And we'll also be creating a, a relationship um, product that's going to go on to his website that we'll offer soon. So that's a pretty cool win. He's on his way back. So yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to be able to work, side, work alongside of this guy. He's pretty cool. I am very cool. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Brooke. What's up? Oh yeah, and then before we get started, too, you you got to go for your um your uh, what you're thankful for in a win. I've already oh. shared mine, so you have to go next. And then we would love to hear yours also. What a better way to get started on the weekend is to uh, tell us in the world something that you're thankful for mm -hmm. in a win that was created this week for you, or that you created, or just anything cool that happened this week. Throw that positivity out there. Yes. We need it. We need it. Um, what am I thankful for? Well, everything. Yeah. And our family's doing so well and having a good time out here in the middle of the desert, in the pool and out of the pool. Um, just thankful for some of the stuff that we have laid out that we're getting ready to um, offer as far as relationship stuff. We got a new podcast coming out that's going to be great, directed just towards our relationship. So, did you tell them about that? I did. You did. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, we've been working really hard this week. A lot going on. So we have a lot, a lot business stuff to be thankful for, but our family and our health and, and all that, we're, we're grateful for that. So hope you guys are as well. Um, yeah. So if you're just getting on, please share anything that you're thankful for, a win that you created this week or just something really cool that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be awesome. Important. We do something with, with a lot of staff and, and teams that I work with. We do something called a clear and a win. And what happens with a clear and a win is where people, they start the meeting out and they clear something off of them that they want to get rid of. It's almost like they have a few minutes to kind of clear the air based on something maybe they dealt with during the week, frustration, uh, an upset, kind of a setback. And then once you've cleared that off, what you're ultimately saying is, hey, I've given that as much time as I can give it. Uh, we're going to move forward and take a step towards making progress. And that's a big thing for any team. I think it's big for any group because listen, in our world right now, there's plenty that we could be really frustrated with. I mean, obviously, we won't even go into today all the stuff that's going on around us and, and some of what has been going on around us. You know, like 2020 may be the worst year that we have experienced yet, and but in a way, there's always a silver lining to a cloud, right? I know you have a lot to say on that. But, no, I don't. <laughs> but we it's all true, know. Right? So, good morning, Gail. Saying. But there's a lot happening. And so, you know, I think at some point we have to reset our mind, and that is that we say, hey, this is what we're dealing with, this is what frustrates us, but moving forward, this is what we're going to focus on, and we're going to focus on what we do have, what resources are here, and how we can use those resources to move forward and create something better than what we already have. That's a big part of maturing. I think if you're not careful, so many things can get your attention, and you can get pulled into things that just totally pull you off your path. And um, anyway, that's uh, like tra well, Travis Flato said, right. I'm choosing to make it my best year. That's, that's why you do what you do, man. That's why you're successful. So um, that kind of idea is like, yes, this is what 
we see, this is what we don't like, but now let's focus on what we do. And so that's a big thing for any team, any family, anybody, you know, clear and win. And then you look at what, what, how you're winning, like what progress you've made, what uh, you're excited about, what you want to make happen. That's a win. And if you can keep your mind on that, I think it keeps your spirit up, keeps your energy up, and you keep moving forward. So Yeah, what better opportunity than right now do we have? Get it. Like that? She's a good one. <laughs> hey, good morning, Pam. Hi, Pam. We, we missed you. you and your family. Um, um, you what just better? smashed your I hand just, into your fist. What? Because, hey, I'm. are we passionate? Yes. yes, we are. <laughs> you guys wonder what why better? I'm always smiling? Because I have to. This is a call for help. Better. <laughs> a cry um, for help. So what better opportunity than right now do we have to look at everything going on around us that are just completely out chaotic. of our control and chaotic and go, you know what? It is what it is. There's not really anything we can do. Yes, we can use our voices to speak up and we can, and we can put things out there into the world and hopefully something will change. And that, that, that is do everything that you can in your power. Yeah. But what better opportunity than right now do we have to look at every single day and go, you know what? Yeah, it sucks, but what am I going to do? What yeah. do I have the resources to do to change my world, my life, the generations that are to come and move forward? Yeah. Best time to do that. Not is a victim. Now. No, not, not at a all. victim. So absolutely. So, so with let's that, let's go. talk about what we're going towards today. What are we doing today? What are we... Oh, we just let's. Um, we have some questions that we still did not get around to last week, so we can start there. And then we would love if you have any questions for us to just bring them in. Here we go. So we're cool. gonna do this. Is it? Hey, Q Rick, a. what's up, bud? All the way from California. Okay, hey, Eric, Erica. Erica, I'll share a win and gratitude moment watching my children navigate distance learning and being at home for so long. Yes with creative ways to still have fun and get outside and create and grow. I know I feel like ours are, are doing so well yeah. with just figuring out ways to, to do new things that they haven't done before. Like Addison is learning new things on her ukulele every day. Like she just is doing things that we're like, yeah, that's let's, awesome. Let's You're be using... honest. Let's be what? honest. Our kids are winners. They are. They, how could they not? <laughs> I mean, look, look at this example they've had right here. Of course. Look at this. Just I mean, that. Look at that. Just look that. At this example. Just you. I mean, just let's that. be honest. I mean, you've helped. Let's be honest. To you've do with this. No, this I'm is at, the whole reason that they they haven't lost their I minds. I have nothing um, to do. With anyway, it's good. So, oh, hey, Rick, so, Pastor Rick know, said we moved to on Texas. A, you oh, oh, from California. Wow. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Congrats. Well, we just moved to Arizona. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's hot. I don't. It's not the same as Texas hot. It's a different hot. But oh, very. Anyway, cool man. Um, it's good to see you. So. So before. Jen, all, your shirt is inside out. No, it's backwards because it's like a reverse. The camera is reverse. But and our wedding bands are on our right hands training, also. Training like funny? an astronaut to go along with today's. No astronauts SpaceX. don't know how to. Astronauts don't know how to spell, so it's always backwards. <laughs> yeah, um, everything's backwards. Yeah, they're not very Sorry. smart. Sorry. So. <laughs> Good to see you, Rick. Um, all right, so we let's have do it. we have our really quick before we start. We have our emerge virtual one day coming up on June nineteenth. So instead of right now where we cannot meet live, we wanted to have an emerge event virtually. So we have that on June nineteenth coming yep. up, and, and we wanted to do um, a share giveaway. So everybody that between now and next Saturday shares this live. We're gonna make sure your post when you share it is public also, or we will not see that you shared it. We'll get a free access into the one day Emerge virtual event on June 19th. So you make sure you share. spend a whole day with me for free. <laughs> Everybody's getting used to these Zoom things. Yeah. Fortunately, right? It is very right? different. <laughs> Our Emerge virtual event will be very different. It is more straight, raw uh, content based around things that, that I train a lot of teams on. So it's very, yeah. very valuable insight. And so we've been doing those uh, live and we had a phenomenal event. Our last one here, we had people from five different states that flew in, which was amazing. Um, but we're going to do the virtual thing for right now. And then we'll have the live event also in September. So um, anyway, but with both, uh, it's going to be really exciting. So yeah, so if you share, so share it, this. share it, make your post public when you're sharing it. Because you okay. don't know that sometimes that if you don't make it public, it doesn't show up as, and we can't see that. So yeah. we want to make sure everybody has fair chance. Next Saturday, we'll do the drawing. Yeah. And Maybe if you're not on and you're not, you don't have to be there next Saturday and we draw your name, uh, someone will email you and let you know uh, what we're doing. So yeah. anyway, with that being said, let's roll with it. All right. So um, there's a lot of uh, unknowns right now. Obviously, we have just a lot. goes okay. without saying. But um, somebody sent in a question 
uh, was it last week or the week before, we, we asked for questions um, about what can we do now moving forward to grow and how does, a bit, how does it benefit to have a mentor or someone that is going to keep you accountable mm-hmm. to your growth? Mm-hmm. And then right now, like, there's just, you know, we don't, we, sometimes we don't know how, how to grow, what to do, especially now. Mm-hmm. So what, what, is, um, what do you think the benefits of having a mentor and accountability person in your life? Um, well, there's a few Such reasons. As yourself. There's a few <laughs> reasons for it. I think first thing, somebody who is not emotionally attached to what it is that you may be experiencing in the moment is somebody that can offer a breath of fresh air and a new insight into your situation. You know, I've heard it said before that a consultant is somebody who asks you for your watch so they can tell you what time it is. And that's very true in some, you know, in some ways um, because what's happening is you already know You have your answers, but somebody on the outside can give a little more insight, shed a little more light onto some things that you already know. And so that's the importance of having a mentor. Anybody that's produced really phenomenal results has had someone that they would say that they look up to, that they would say, this person inspired me. I was explaining to our daughter Addison the other night that Elvis Presley said he wanted to be like Roy Orbison. And I, I showed uh, some. I showed the Pretty Woman video, at least to my daughter Addison. And I was like, you know, you've heard of Elvis. You probably haven't heard of this guy, but you've heard maybe some of the songs. But you know, for for us to continue to grow, we always need somebody that's a bit ahead of us, who's already doing something, maybe done something, seen something that we haven't seen yet. And I think our biggest problems as human beings is we're such emotional, emotional creatures. Like we we make decisions based on emotion a lot of times. We. We spend, we don't spend, we invest, we don't invest, we, we you know, act, make decisions about how to manage our time based a lot of times on emotion. And I think that can be a real problem. And so a lot of times having someone who can help you to, to stay in your lane without letting you know, the emotion and remaining a bit dispassionate about what it is that you're doing can help you to see something that maybe you don't see, can help you to avoid some of the blind spots that you see. And that's a big thing. I think for a lot of people and um, having mentors in my life totally changed the trajectory of how I was living. I had some mentors on so many different levels around different things, but the main mentor that I had that really shifted things, the first one, his name was Dale. Dale in Atlanta took me in, showed me things, exposed me to a lot of great conversations, put me at the table with some phenomenal people, and I started to learn from him, watch and see his example, and then, of course, I started traveling and working for my mentor, Mr. Clemmer. And the different dynamics, you know, for with having a mentor, one of the things that you always have to remember is no mentor is perfect, but they can be perfect for you, mm-hmm. which it means is that you don't have to see them as a perfect person because I can promise you traveling and if you have any proximity at all to a mentor, you're going to find that they are flawed. And that's one of the things that we get emotional about. Oh, I can't believe that they're not perfect. Well, nobody's perfect. I mean, no one is. However, I think it's wise to know that we can gain a lot of insight from different people and that not one person is always going to have your answer. And so I think you need more than one per se mentor, but I think if you find someone who has something that you don't have yet or that something that they're doing is really working for them, then by all means, open yourself up to learn from them, read their stuff, listen to their podcasts, do whatever. Um, that's hugely important because when you get wrapped up in emotion, sometimes you start making knee-jerk reactions. You, you, you operate from impulse, and as we know, operating from emotion is not the best approach to creating success. What you want to do to create success is be consistent, and nothing will pull you off of being consistent like some wild emotion um, and you know frustration or all the things that come when you're trying to build something good. You know, for example, delay. I mean, that's a big part of it. The NASA launch today is happening at uh, this afternoon at 12, I think 12 Pacific, is that right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, around 3 o'clock Eastern. And it was delayed this past week. And so that's what happens when you have something that's really important that you want to create. There's going to be delay. But if you allow your emotions to pull you off and you're pissed off because what didn't happen on my timeline, then you're not going to be successful because now your focus is on your emotions. Your focus is on what you're emotional state is telling you to do and that's not consistency you know people that are emotionally immature have a hard time being successful they can create success but then they have a hard time staying successful and so you know it's one thing to get to the top and create success it's a whole nother thing to be able to create it and then maintain it and one of the ways that I've been able to maintain clients people that I work with and be able to keep doing what I'm doing is I have found myself working to really 
con confront some of the emotional stuff that comes up for me um, just as being a human being, being a dad, being someone that provides, being someone that's trying to figure out answers for my own self, for my relationship, for my children, and then being on the phone hours and hours a day with Zoom sessions working with teams, you know, a lot of times there's a lot and there's a lot of things that I have to check myself on and go, okay, you got to reset and you got to step back in. And if you're not careful and not have someone that can help you to do that, to talk you kind of off the ledge when you're really at a point where you're like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. If you don't have that, you're just not going to be as successful as you could be. And with the way things are, I've heard people say, well, I can't afford a mentor. I can't afford to buy books. I can't afford whatever. The fact of the matter is you can go to the library. You can download free digital stuff. You can watch a Facebook Live. You can watch a free Facebook <laughs> yeah, Live. It's free. So all that stuff. We Podcast. don't want to beat this to death, but yeah. you need to find a mentor. If I were to ask you right now, who in your life could tell you no about something and you would not do it? If they said no, like if you asked, hey, should I do this? And then they said no to you about something that really mattered. Would you not do it? Because if you don't have somebody that can speak into your life that you look up to like that, that, that could help trust. you to make a decision that you trust, then you are probably out there on your own. And maybe that works sometimes, but I think it, it increases the odds of your success by having a multitude of counselors of people around you that can support you and speak into your life. And I'll tell you, they're not just religious voices to me. I have people spiritually that I can, can talk to. I have people on the psychology level that I can talk to. I have people on the relational level that I can talk to. And these are people that have created success in these areas, but I'm very aware that I need different people at different times. No one person has all my answers. So, m you know, mentor, yes. Accountability um, is somebody also that can call you on your stuff. When you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to exercise X numbers of days this week, I'm going to be up at this time, I'm going to get this amount of, of writing done, I'm going to get this many sales calls done. If you don't have somebody keeping you accountable, you start buying into your own garbage. And when you start buying into your own excuses, there's an old saying that excuses always sound best to the person that's sharing them. Mm -hmm. And you can make up excuses on the way to work about why you're late. And by the time you get to work, because you've told yourself it so many times, you start to believe it. So you start believing your own garbage about why you can't do, why you can't have. And if you don't have somebody to help you stay accountable that says, hey, you said you're gonna do this, now get out there and do it, um, you're gonna have some problems. And there's a guy that I coach, and we made a joke about it, but um, named Matt. Matt called me one day, and he was we're working on his getting his health right and, and losing some weight and getting back exercising. And he called me one morning. We had a 5 a.m. call, and, uh, and and I said, "Well, what's what's your day look like?" And he's like, "Well, I'm having a rough day getting out of the bed." I said, "Why?" He says, "I was up late last night." And I said, "Bud, you have a call with me at 5 a.m. in the morning, and you're going to tell me you were up late last night, knowing that we were going to do this this morning." I said, what's your workout schedule look like today? He goes, well, I'm afraid you're going to ask me that. I said, we're hanging up the phone right now. You're going to go downstairs because he was traveling. You're going to go downstairs to the hotel that you're in. You're going to find the fitness room, and you're going to work out for an hour. And when you get done working out, you're going to take a selfie. You're going to send it to me, and then we can talk the next time, right? Or else we're not having this conversation anymore because I can't help a person unless the person wants to be helped, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be open to being helped. You have to ask for some feedback and some accountability and then be willing to, to eat some humble pie when somebody gives it to you. That's one of the things that can help a person stay on the path. And love is not always a pat on the back saying, oh, you've, you've yeah. got what it takes, you're enough. Sometimes love is somebody going, I'm calling you on that BS you got going right now because you're just running your mouth about excuses that aren't really real, but they make you feel good and they justify you not doing what you said you wanted to do. So that's the conversation around having a mentor and accountability. That's why it's so important because you'll create excuses and the more you allow permission for yourself to, to tell yourself that those excuses are right, you start to justify them and rationalize them. The next thing you know, you believe them and you're not doing what you need to be doing. So yeah, there's and I think, that. Yeah, and I think, um, I think a person has to, has to be ready in some sort of way. Like if, I'm, if I know that I am doing what I can to change physically, but, but I'm not seeing change, I'm gonna hire a personal assistant. That's easy, like that's an easy thing for me to go, yeah, I, I know I need to do this, so I'm gonna hire somebody that knows more than I know. You need a personal trainer or a personal assistant? Did I say assistant? Yes. Trainer. Pers I'm your personal assistant. <laughs> You're my personal assistant. Let's make no mistake about that. <laughs> so anyway, okay, back to there. Um, You're gonna hire a personal trainer. A personal trainer that can help me change in ways that I can't see for myself, and I'm, I'm ready for it, and I'm like, okay. all right, here. Do, do what we need to do to move forward. Okay. But also, I think it's very important to have
friends in your circle, not just a mentor. Obviously, yes, a mentor because like if, if, if you know that you can't move forward in a certain area with your goals or your relationship, you have to have somebody that can see a little differently than you can see. But also having friends in a circle around you that go, you know what? I know you're better than that. Let's let's do it like this. Let's not settle. Let's not, you know, so I think having those people around you too. And there are so many resources out there that if you do not have within your like personal proximity of where you live, someone that can mentor you, you can find it out there somewhere. You can listen to podcasts, you can watch YouTube videos, you can read books, like just all of like you said. So you can have a mentor that isn't necessarily right there with you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it doesn't have to be anybody that you've be... ever met. I have people right, that send like... us messages all the time. They're like, you've helped us through this time and this, and I've never met them. I mean, you know them in spirit. They they listen to what you said. That's the same for you. You'll find <clears throat> you'll find people that, that can speak into your life that you don't know. Um, anyway, I, I don't want to stay on this. I think people get that. Um, but with as many resources there are available, there's really no excuse at this point to not having somebody that can speak into your life that can tell you no that you would listen to. And I think there's a it, it's a mark of maturity to be able to be told no or to be told something that you don't necessarily want to hear, but you're willing to adhere to that and you're willing to do it. And I think that's a mark of maturity. Some people are can't handle a mentor. Some people can't handle accountability because they're emotionally immature. And the moment you tell them something they don't want to hear, they tuck their tail and they run and then they make you the bad person. And I think that's something that we don't want to be. Um, there were plenty of times when I worked for my mentor, Mr. Glimmer, he would say things that would piss me off and I would be like, I can't believe. And then I'd realize, well, wait a minute, this is not so much about the issue. This is more about me becoming a grown man to where I can handle feedback and move forward. And, you know, a coach is not always somebody who's patting you on the back saying you're doing amazing. A coach is somebody who looks at you and goes, hey, this is where you said you could do better. This is what your accountability looks like. Now let's jump on it and get it done. That's a powerful thing to have in your life. I think we would all agree with that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, let's move on. Let's let's keep moving on that. I don't want to stay there yeah, much so, longer. So, what we're what we started with was um, some questions that kind of rolled over. If you're just joining in from a couple of weeks ago, where we sent out social media posts and then an email to all of the people that are subscribed to our email list. What are some topics that you would like to hear us talk about? So some of these are the ones that we didn't get to. So that's what we started with first, was having an accountability person or a mentor in your life. So if you have any questions for your mentor for the hour, please post them here and we'll we'll um, we'll get to them. Okay. Okay, so the next one, um, kind of piggybacking off of that, I think would be really good, is okay. um, I'm going to roll these two questions into one. Okay. Um, so creating your dream job and still being successful, and then in this moment of time that we're in, how do you vision cast for something like that? Yeah. And it being in the, kind of in the unknown. So those are kind of two that I put together um, to piggyback off of having someone to help you grow. Okay, so creating a dream job and still being successful. Yeah. Um, you do what you have to do until you can do what you can do. Um, I gave my, I'll tell you, this would be great insight for anybody that wants to start a business or do something. The only reason we're successful at all and have gotten to the places that we've been is because there was no plan B. And I can yeah. tell you looking back now, it is easy to say, look at what we've done and the books and the stuff and the venues and all that. But let me tell you, I don't know that I would have gone with that. Again, I think I would have done it a little differently. I'm just being honest. I think I would have done more of, of what I had at the time and I would, I would have moved more into it with, um, I think, a little bit better stewardship of things because um, I went all in on this thing. I did, guys. I mean, I gave everything that I had to personal development and leadership and there was no plan B. Would I do that again? Uh, I don't think so. And the reason for it is it just, it, it cost so much. It was so valuable. I mean, obviously we created success now, but it wasn't easy in the beginning. There were times where I'm going to speak to rooms full of people and there's no money in our accounts. Like I'm trying to help people move forward and there's just, there's no money. There's stress. I was like, are we going to be able to make this? She's dealing with it. We have a kid at home. Like there's all of that. Plus the, just the travel component and trying to show up strong and really be in front of a room and connect with people and be authentic and vulnerable and honest when it felt like some things were going to hell and it was that's how it felt and she should talk about this even as much as I can um, I don't know that I would have gone with the don't have plan you know have a plan B I think I would have had a plan B I would have transitioned more into what I wanted to do versus what I, I had to do um, slowly and I would have, have executed on, on both a little better 
And so I think for somebody who's looking to transition into a new career or a new occupation or whatever that is, new line of work, um, I would say work what you have as well as you can until you can do what it is that you want to do. And I, I coach some guys that are young docs. They're, they're making great money. They're already crushing it in their businesses. And I tell them, look, if you're single and you, know, you don't have a, a house yet, you don't have somewhere that you feel like you're going to have to be for long term or you haven't developed a relationship, no kids, then yeah, you can take big risks. You can be more bold. And I recommend that because once you get married, like it, it's, it's over. Like once you're married, Mima just came on. It's over. Once you're married, you can't do anything. Like life becomes miserable. But no, I'm kidding. But once you get married, there's so many things. Once you start a family, so many things that you're, you're in line that you've pretty much got to do and you got to be responsible for that. So yeah. I would say have, have both. A lot of these guys are like, you can't have plan B. I've heard Will Smith do a video of this actor. I didn't give myself a plan B. Well, if you got bills to pay, you got a roof over your head, you got kids you got to provide for, they don't care so much about your dream. What your kids care about is to make sure that they have cereal for breakfast, their tummies are full, that there's a roof over their head, they have a bed to sleep in. You have to be a good steward. You have to be responsible. And you don't have to be, but I think you know what I mean by that. Um, I think you become your best when you're responsible for the people around you. And so that's what I would have done differently, um, creating my dream job. It is my dream job. I do what I do now. I get to work with people, travel places, see things. I've been, uh, it's been phenomenal, you know, and that's wonderful, but I would do it a little bit differently. And so plan well, execute slow, give amounts of time to what it is that you want to work, the thing that you want to do. You have to hold yourself accountable to that because if you're not going to hold yourself accountable to it while you do have some cash flow coming in from your other job and doing what you have to do until you can do what you want to do, you, you're still not going to be accountable to the, the thing that you know you need to do, except this time you're being asked to be accountable to something and you don't have any cash flow coming in, which can make it even harder. It can make it more stressed. I, I will tell you, I am much more creative knowing that we have cash flow coming in. We have residual income coming in because of the way we've structured our business, because I'm so brilliant. We, have, we do have money coming in. It's easier to be very creative when you aren't so stressed about your bills. And most people live at the highest level they can, can with their money and they wind up staying stressed. It's like the moment we've got a little bit of margin, um, we go buy some other new thing and now we're stressed for that level and then it's hard to be creative. And yes, necessity is the mother of invention. If you make yourself have to make money, you'll find ways to make money. But the, the truth of the matter is, I think it's wiser to be able to create margin. And then when we have extra margin, instead of just spending it on more things, we take the margin and invest it back into the business. We take margin and invest it into things that are going to move us forward. You know, this last year we spent tons of money on equipment, computers, lighting, all these different things. And to be able to have the things that we have, that's what I think is wise. I, I think it's you're being a better steward when you do have a plan B and you slowly, slowly move over to your plan A um, and, and you have this new thing going. So. Hopefully that helps. I, I think it, it would. I, if someone would have told me 10 years ago, yes, Ronnie, you want to do this, don't give up your real estate career because at the time uh, I was doing really well with real estate also, but we did a career change and it's been, it was, mm -hmm. it was rough recovering from a career change to build a dream of being able to travel and speak and do the things that we do when I knew I had a family to take care of. It, it was challenging, keeping my head right, my emotions right keeping my spirit right, trying to keep clear vision, trying to make this relationship work really well, make sure she wasn't left over in the dark going, hey, you don't pay attention to me anymore, you're working all the time, and, and being present with our kids who, gratefully, they've, 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 you know, uh, they've turned out really well. And so right. they, they've turned out good. But I think that's it, guys. For anybody that wants to start something new, do something new. If you want to write a book, just give yourself X amount of time to write the book. Sit your butt down and write. And, and that's it. You know, I've heard the hardest thing about writing a book is not writing. It's simply just sitting yourself down to write. That's the hardest thing. And so um, anyway, that's that's big. And so uh, consider that. Let's let's keep rolling. Yeah. And then the vision casting when there's there's some so much unknown out there, like vision okay. casting for something that you are dreaming for or that you want, want to do. Like if, if you do have a business right now, okay. how do you continue to move forward? OK, how would here's the answer to that question. Um, vision for the unknown. How would you behave if the problem that you're facing were not there? And so what that means is, <clears throat> how am I going to be on the other side of the problem? Well, I'd be excited, I'd be enthused, I'd be passionate. Well, that just tells us that if you can be that, 
then you wanna focus on the things that cause you to feel and be that. That's powerful. And so how would you be if the problem you feel like you're facing were not there? That's one way to infuse a beingness into you of excitement, motivation, inspiration, right? And then, then approaching the challenges that you feel like you're facing and, and attacking them as they come. Um, if, if you have a big problem that shows up for you, you attack it as it comes. You go ahead and, and confront the problem. You don't want to keep sweeping things under the rug because at some point you're going to have to face those things. And so for some people, I, I can just tell you for us, like I made decisions out of the gate that in some ways I regret. I, I took cash flow. I put it back into the business. I let myself get behind on taxes. That it wasn't good, but I thought, okay, in, you know, in 36 months, we will financially be at this place and I'll be able to, to, to pay all of that off. But then we started expanding and then it's like, well, there's different demands. And so now the cash flow is there, but what are you going to do? You're going to pay off the, your tax stuff or are you going to invest it back in the business? And then I went, I'm investing back more into the business. Well, the tax stuff still looms on. I think that when it comes to having clarity and vision casting, I think you want to have big picture that excites you and, and motivates you, but you have to be willing to do small things really well for it to create space for much better things to come. Because until the better things come, if you're not taking care of the small things along the way, those small things are like a monster that will keep looming over your head. And the next thing you know, you're, you're like stressed, worried, and I've laid in bed at night going, oh God, you know, what, what are we gonna do about this? I gotta handle this. And it would have been much better had I handled it well right out of the gate. I think that's maturity. I think that's wisdom. If I were coaching someone at a really high level and they said, Ronnie, I gotta take on this or take on this, I would say, hey, confront the thing head on that you need to confront. You know, yesterday I got a, um, a Facebook, a memory thing sent out from a few years ago when I spoke at an event with Brian Tracy. And Brian Tracy is this legend in the leadership world. He wrote a book called Eat the Frog. And the, the context for the book was that, you know, you take on the difficult thing in the beginning of the day because once you've attacked it, you've hit it, you can move into the rest of the day a little more free and your, your energy is a little better versus waiting to the end of the day when there's more chaos, more challenge, when you're tired to, be, to, to do the hard thing. And then the difficult thing's been looming over you all day anyway. And so that, I just think it's, it's much smarter to go ahead and hit it out of the gate. And then once you've got that, you start to build momentum and momentum is the great exaggerator. It moves you into more of an excitement because if you can see you know, a person that's lost three pounds who's been struggling uh, to lose weight, a person that lo has lost three pounds, a lot of times is more excited and feels better about themselves in that moment than the person that's lost 30 who's hit the plateau. And so what do you have to do? you got to continue that vision cast forward, uh, attacking what you need to attack, but keeping your mind on what we call the horizon beyond the horizon. Because if you're just shooting for the horizon, the problem is you might get there and then you're done. So as it pertains to vision, you must always think through, not to. Think through the challenge, what it will be like on the other side, not to the challenge. Like we'll be good when we start to finally make 100 grand a year, you know, 200 a year. Three For us, it was like, once we make this amount of money, then, then we'll be fine. I thought, man, we'll, we'll, we won't be stressed. Well, we've four times our income, like our, from when I, anyway. And, and there's always challenges and stresses. And so just know that as long as you're confronting the one thing that comes up at a time and moving that out of the way, you keep moving forward. And there are gonna be times where you feel like you're moving really, really fast towards your goals. And then there's gonna be times where you feel like you're not moving towards your goals at all. And the thing that separates someone who will make it and be successful and the person who's not successful is how they handle the plateaus when they don't feel like they're moving toward their vision. There are days that I get up and I feel like we haven't made any progress at all. And then the next day I can get up and I get these emails and I get these things and I'm like, oh man, we're progressing so much. There's so much to be thankful for. But it's those days when you don't feel like you're moving very quickly towards something. Those are the days that are going to separate you from... Um, from the, the other people. It's what separates the men from the boys, the women from the girls, is that, that plateau. Yes, ma'am. Raise your hand if you have a question. What's up, Amanda? <laughs> Dr. Amanda, Amber, Amber. Hey, Amber. Amber. Um, Gosh, girl, go for I haven't it. seen you forever. Okay. Um, I have a question. Okay. Off of this, here. Okay, so you're talking a lot about plateaus mm -hmm. and moving forward towards success, and obviously success looks completely different for everyone. Mm -hmm. So a plateau, usually you feel like is, or we 
I most people will feel like is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So in moving towards success, what are some other things that you would consider like a misconception to success? So there's, oh. uh, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, there's <laughs> success and there's like the, the gold medals and the woohoo and yay, we did right. it and yeah, hand claps and stuff. But what is it not? Okay. What is success not like what the, the bad side of success? Um, I getting think, to that. Uh, for anybody who is a uh, aggressive uh, a tight get it done person with big vision the one thing that I had to realize is first off success does not feel like success why because if success starts to feel like success and you just feel successful all the time then that means that you have not created some more tension to keep you growing towards something else I don't think success is an end destination I think success is a process that you must be in it's not an end destination. And so it doesn't feel like success. If someone would have told me that, you know, Ronnie, being able to travel, being able to write books, create podcasts and do all that stuff, it, it, you're going to feel so successful. I would have thought, yep, you're, all, you're right. And then um, what I realized is that it doesn't really feel any different because I continually hold myself to a standard of what could be next. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not present and I don't enjoy the process. But there's always a next, and there's something that in us, we, I think we need to chase and that we need to pursue. And I think that's where we find excitement for the day. It's like waking up going, all right, here's the goal for the day. This is why it's important to have the accountability we talked about. You know what you're moving towards. But I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that success feels like success. It doesn't. There are obviously so many benefits to creating success, but it doesn't always feel like success. It doesn't. There are days where it's like the higher you go on the ladder of success, the thinner the air is, the harder it is to breathe, the bigger the decisions are. I was coaching someone this past week, big decision had to be made, and it's a decision that can change the company. And so we looked at what the priorities were, the mission of the company, whether this person that, that we were talking about, whether that fit, and so on. These are decisions that impact people's lives. And the more success you create, the more influence you probably have, and the more when you say no to something or someone, there's a chance that they could be hurt, that they could get their feelings hurt the, the the choices that you make like I'm not a political guy you guys know that but like I think some of the the people that are in these positions now politically like President Trump I mean people are evil to him and I get it there's things that he's probably done to deserve that I'm not you guys know I'm not in politics but like you get into certain positions and man you're a success but it probably doesn't feel like it and so it, it is a journey of becoming something more and I think as long as there's something more for you to become you're not ever going to be able to rest in your success completely and be like, yeah, I've arrived. Because the moment you think you've arrived, it's the old saying, you can unpack your bags because you're probably going to stay stuck there for a really long time. And I just refuse to stay stuck. We refuse to stay stuck. And so it doesn't feel like it. So that's a big misconception. It's I think, more, more about progress. Yeah, it's pretty much progress. Like right. plateaus are progress. Yeah. Like it may not feel like you're making progress, but yeah, if you were to be hitting it and moving to the next level all the time, every single day, every single day, then probably what you're moving towards does not require a real, a lot of in-depth effort if you're climbing every single day. Because then it would be easy. And if it was easy, everybody else would be doing it. And then, it, you know, I don't know that you would feel like you were super successful because if everybody's successful in a sense, it's almost like no one is because it's what differentiates or moves us and sets up us apart. So um, there's that component. Another misconception, and this is a big one, and, and I talked about this in, in my book, Dig, is that success will equal applause. And that means that the more successful you are, the more people are going to pat you on the back. Here's what I've learned. Um, the more successful I have become, the less people acknowledge me. And the reason I think that is because when I was first starting, people could see that, man, I was just in that grind and I was trying to do it and, and I, was, I was in it and passionate and spitting and, <laughs> and they could see it probably looked like I was tired, like I had had my butt kicked, right? Um, but the, the fact of the matter is um, they, they felt like they needed to applaud me because they could see I was just getting started. And then over time, it's like you get to go to cool places and, and train teams at, at places like NASA and, and some of the places I've gotten to go. And then people are like, oh, he must know. He knows he's successful, so I don't need to say anything. And then it's like they stop applauding and they stop acknowledging you. You know, people stop saying, oh, man, I'm so proud of you. You know, my family does that. But like other people like, oh, he probably knows. You know, and it's, it's almost like, you know, you look at people in these high level positions and it's like, do we ever acknowledge them for busting their butt to get to where it is that they are and, and being the type of person that is in a leadership role? 
because it's really easy to tear people down because we think, well, they've made it. And so it's a little harder. And so I thought success would mean more accolades and more people saying, hey, you're doing amazing. That's not the case at all. Um, another thing is that talent is enough for success. That's a big misconception. Um, I think in some ways I'm talented at what I do. I think there were certain giftings, but I can tell you that there's a lot of talented people in the world that want to do probably what you want to do. There's a lot of talented people out there that are, are struggling because they don't have the work ethic. And you know, I think for us to become more of a success, uh, I think we need to be more consistent in what we're doing, and that consistency builds more self-confidence. And self-confidence is the thing that can help you to handle those plateaus when, when you hit them. And so, uh, uh, Rick just said, said something, forgive me, I'm guilty of doing that with you. Yeah, I, I get it, man. Success is a process, but it's important to celebrate the milestones. Absolutely, and so um, Ty said it's important to celebrate the milestones. That's an, there's a, here's another misconception. Um, that one was good, I think, um, that I just shared. But here's another misconception, is that the big trophies in the trophy case, those are the only ones that matter. And so it's like, uh, you know, I can say, man, I trained teams at NASA, um, you know, especially on launch day. It's like, yeah, man, maybe I had something to do with that. Woo, yeah. And then American Express, I can open my wallet. I can pick up my phone. at and is my provider. That, I've trained those teams. I've trained people at American Express. I can feel that way, right? And go, yes, these are the big trophies. But the fact of the matter is, it's the lives changed no matter where I have yeah. been. And so that's the thing that we always have to remember. And if you're focused on helping people with the product or the service that you offer, then there's always a market. There's always people that we can help. And it's not just people that we would say, oh, that'll mean I'm successful. When I do this, this'll mean I'm successful. It's not that. It's celebrating the whole process of becoming someone better. Because if I've learned anything, change is a process. It is not a one-time event. Mm -hmm. And if you can celebrate the day because you realize just how valuable time is, then you'll always be able to work. I mentioned Brian Tracy earlier. He said something to me. We were in Toronto doing the event together. Brian told me, he said, well, let me tell you, Mr. Tracy said to me, it's what I still call him. I still call uh, my mentor, Mr. Klimmer. But Mr. Tracy said to me, he said, if you love the people that you're in front of, you'll never work a day in your life. And now it's felt like work, but I know what he meant. He meant that if you really care for people and you want them to you know, move forward and you want to help them, you'll always have work, but it won't feel like work because your focus is on, uh, your focus is on making an impact for them. And that's been kind of our driving force, or at least for me. So yeah. um, anyway, uh, last thing on, on success, um, it's not going to happen on your timeline. How about that? I will tell you that. You, success is not going to happen on your timeline. You can write this word uh, if you want to, and you can underline it and put a star beside it. The word is wrong. You are going to be wrong about how long you think it takes you to create success. Because if you create it and it hasn't taken time, and you haven't strengthened your legs to be able to hold up the table called success, and you get it, the legs will break, and you will fall, and you will lose things. And I had a mentor that used to say, you impress people with your successes, but you will impact them with your failures. And so if you do the things the right way along the way, then what happens is you get stronger. And then as you get stronger, you have a capacity to handle 100 people asking you for support. You can then handle a thousand people asking you for support. You can have answers to people at higher levels because you've done the work on, on the lower level that many people want to skip. And I think that's, that's one of the most important things for us to remember is that success is not going to happen on your timeline. So go ahead and be wrong that you're not going to have a number 10 relationship just because you got married and you're on the honeymoon. That does not mean that you have a number 10 marriage. You can be delusional thinking, oh, just because it feels good. You don't know what a marriage is. You don't know what a relationship is. You don't know what a business is. You don't know what a relationship is until somebody has said no to you. When somebody says no to you and you get rejected, then you get to find out whether or not you, know, you, you really have what it takes. And one of the books that I was reading, he, he's a guy that he wrote the screenplay for Bagger Vance. He was talking about doing a, a big premiere. They had done a movie and a premiere, and they thought everybody was going to show up. They were expecting a 1,000 people, and like 100 people showed up. And the reviews were horrible of his movie. And he was like, he, he said, I was so ready to quit. My head was down. He said, but another guy in the industry came over to me and said, how are you feeling? He goes, I feel like I totally screwed it up. He goes, I feel like I failed. And then the guy said to him, well, congratulations. You're now a professional. You've had your ass handed to you, so now you know whether or not you're going to be serious about doing this business or not. And that's the truth. Like, you have to get your butt handed to you. You have to fail. You got to fail forward. You got to screw it up. And you got to stop playing it so safe. 
And, and you know, you are going to get your tail kicked. There have been events that I've done. I've had my tail kicked before. Cried on the airplane going, I don't know if I can do this anymore. But you know what? You, you dig back in. You get some people around you that can encourage you. And it will help you to keep moving forward. Um, otherwise, you get the emotional stuff to it. Um, and you start becoming negative And you stop staying at it. You have 80,000 thoughts per day. And a majority of them are from your past. A majority of them are from a negative thing that has gone on. And so we keep reliving the past through this 80,000 thoughts that we have a day. And I just don't think that's going to serve us to get to where it is that we want to go. So there's that. That was kind of a long answer. I hope it was okay. Do you have any <laughs> direction right. of, of what's next here? Um, well, first I want to say, because if some of you are just tuning in, we are doing a, sh a share giveaway with this live. So if you share it and make your post public so that we can see it by next Saturday, when we do the drawing of the names, then we have our Emerge virtual event coming up on June 19th. What's the you cost for that? 79. So $79 uh, admission day. for five hours with me of content, of yeah. just leadership content. Okay. There will be breaks, <laughs> not straight five no. hours. And it'll be recorded. So if you're a part of it, I'm sorry, if you're a part of it, we're, we'll send you a recorded copy of it as well. If you can't sit the whole five days, but it's an in-depth training called yeah. uh, Emerge Virtual. If you're serious about taking it to the next level, you definitely want to be on this. Hey Tom, how are you bud? Um, anyway, so yeah, be a part of that. It'll yes, be good. and so if you share this video, then we have the drawing coming up next Saturday, and we'll announce um, somebody who gets a free access into the day. Yeah, for sure. sure and that's a, so that's a seventy nine dollar value, right? Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else? Yeah. Are so we... we have we have another one, and also these are questions that we have taken from social media our social media family and from our um, people that are on our email list that have emailed in questions and topics. Let me say so hey to Josh. You, hey, Josh. Hi, Linda. And Linda. Linda a long time friend. I know, I was going to say like Linda was the great mom. encourager <laughs> when I was little. She, anyway, uh, Josh Hasty. What's up, man? That's one of the, that guy right there. I've been working with Josh for a couple years and I, I tell people um, when they ask, it's like, I don't know that there's anybody that has been it's humble and open to coaching and has taken it and assimilated it into his life, his business, is that guy. Josh Hasty, you are a gift to me, man. And just watching you grow from the first email he sent me one time, which was, it was incredible to where we are now, him and his wife, uh, Ashley, in their business. They're amazing people. So thanks for watching for a minute, bud. Uh, you're awesome. So um, what are we doing? So if you, ha if you have any questions, um, please feel free to put them here. And I'm also on, I have my phone turned on over here. If you have a question, you can send it. If you want it to be anonymous, you can message me. And I have it right here and I can see. So anyway, so we'll go with another question that we had sent in last week. Um, okay, so there's a lot wrapped in this. Okay. You ready? Am <laughs> okay. I ready? Yes, yeah. I think I'm okay. ready. Okay, <laughs> you're born ready, babe. Okay, so uh, everything goes without saying what all is going on right now. So how do we keep hope when things seem to be getting worse? Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some people who believe one thing and some people who believe another, which is causing division within their core group. Um, so how do we deal with that? And then also this is causing a lot of people to go into a downward spiral mm -hmm. because of fear. Mm -hmm. So how do we navigate this and how do we, how, how do we help people understand what's really going on and help them navigate it. Okay. And uh, the last part of the question is, is it normal to want to ride merry-go-rounds more than normal right now? Yes, it is. It is very it normal. It is very normal to want to go to Everybody the wants to go Just get on check out on the merry-go-round. Check out. And I saw that Disney is opening up back up in Disney, phases Disney and Universal. Disney Universal, yeah. That's good. So, yes, it is normal That's to want normal. to ride merry-go-rounds right now because it would be a checkout, the great checkout. Um, so yeah. question is, how do you keep hope when things seem to get, be getting worse? Um, some people think it's a hoax, the whole deal. Um, yeah. Some people, yeah. I, so here, a, a quick thought, just as a, a personal answer. I think some of COVID has been over sensationalized, for sure. I don't know that the agenda behind it, whether that's mass vaccines, everybody has to get a vaccine. I don't know what it is. It's a big money game. Big pharma is a big money game. Uh, I know that, but I'm also not downplaying the fact that people are getting sick and, and that there are people that need to really take care of themselves and be aware of what's happening. Also, um, masks, like it's become a political thing and so forth. But if you watch, I think the CDC is starting to say, hey, 
The only time you should wear a mask is if you're taking care or need to you know, wear a mask is if you're taking care of someone with COVID. Um, is the mask that you're wearing working? Is it even effect, a, a, effective? A cloth mask? I don't think so. You know, we've seen that where a person sprays aerosol, it goes right through the mask. So it's almost like just a mind game to have one on. I, I think there's that conversation. But at the end of the day, how do you keep moving forward in the midst of all that? Well, there's always confusion, always chaos. There's always something going on. The thing is, where do you put your focus? And one of the, the things that has, has helped me tremendously, guys, is, is a, a phrase that I heard years ago, is that action dissolves fear. If you sit back and you focus on things that you're not sure about, if you focus on division and discord, if you focus on things that, that cause you to go back to some old emotion that maybe doesn't serve you, um, I think we have emotions memorized pretty well. And I think we can become very addicted to emotion in that I can forget about fear, I can forget about guilt, I can fear, forget about shame or, or resentment, and I start taking action on something new. But the moment I see something that doesn't cause me to stay in that lane, I go back to these old emotions that I have memorized so well, and then I'm back to them, and it's almost like an addiction. And so it's the old saying, you don't break addictions, you replace them, right? And so um, what's important for us is to say, okay, what does action look like for me today? And I need to hold myself accountable to staying in that lane of taking action as much as possible versus being bombarded with all the information that's out there. Because here's, here's the deal, guys. People sell information. They're, they're, they, they utilize fear to get us to pay attention. Why? Because we want to protect our families. We want to take care of ourselves. And so that only makes sense. And so if the news, it's the old saying, if it bleeds, it leads, meaning if it's a horrible story, that's what's going to get the most attention. And so they, that's what always runs, right? You don't see news talking about good things. You don't see positive things typically happening in the news. And so if you give your attention to that, it's going to play on the emotions that we know so well. And the next thing we know, because of those emotions, we're making decisions from that emotional state. And it doesn't mean emotions aren't good for us, right? Emotions can be a great catalyst for us taking action. But I think we need to take action towards the things that we know are going to give the greatest amount of return for us and for the people that we would say that we're called to. Your job is not to fix everybody in the world. That's one of the things that I had to mature past. I am not the Messiah. I am not. I am not the Messiah. She is not Wonder Woman. You know, people talk about how they feel like they're that. And it's like, well, then all you're doing is setting yourself up to become a martyr, which is, oh, you know, my life is just so hard because I always try to take care of everybody else. And that's garbage. You got to take care of yourself, right? And as you take care of yourself, then you can help other people. So you put your focus on the things that are going to help you to be better. And so you, I, I break action down into an acronym. I say the first thing you have to do is you have to align with a goal. You know, something that's bigger than you, align with a cause. Second thing you have to do is you have to be willing to commit to it. Once you align with it and then you commit to it, then you have to be willing to deal with what the T is in action, which is transition. And that means that you're going to be right out there in the middle. You haven't arrived where you think you want to arrive. You left where you used to be. That's where you feel like you're in, in no man's land. There's the next letter in action is I, which is impartation. That's where I'm always imparting good things into my my atmosphere. I'm listening to good things. I'm reading good things. I'm speaking good things into my atmosphere. And the reason that that might, for some people like, well, that sounds delusional. You're just being positive all the time. It's like, okay, well, I can choose to focus on the negative and I've seen what that does to me. I know what it's like to be uh, really negative. I'm very critical. There are times where she says, babe, you got to stop. You got to stop talking about you. You got to stop talking about what you're doing because you're being really overcritical. And so we do something. No, I call like it. Give yourself a break. Like you are. Yeah. You've been pouring out yeah. all day. So give yourself a break. <laughs> yeah. So here's something really powerful in the impartation part um, is, is being willing to play what's called the, the quiet game. And that is that if I know that there's a, a point where all the good chemicals are depleted out of my brain because I've given, given it my best all day, then if I start being negative, I say, shut up. You got to just shut up. I did a podcast on this this past week. If you guys don't listen to the podcast, but I talked about telling myself to shut up and how well it worked. And so sometimes you just got to say, shut up. We're going to be quiet right now. And so from that standpoint, the impartation part is I'm always speaking and putting good energy into my atmosphere. The O is then I observe. You've got to be willing to see how the things that you're doing are working or not, right? And this is why feedback from the outside is so important. You have somebody that can help you to see something that maybe you, you don't see yourself. The mentors that I have, the people that I'm closest to, just telling you, are much older than me. They're 20 to 30 years older than me. And for that, the reason for that is that 
I'm digging pretty hard to find insights that I wouldn't normally think that I would have at the age that I'm at, maybe. Because I, you know, in my 40s, it's like you think you start thinking you know everything, and then you realize you don't know crap. Like you still don't know crap. And maybe even the older you get, the more you learn, the more you don't know, and the more you realize you don't know. But observing the O in action, align, commit, transition, impart, observe, means you're willing to assess things for what they are. See them for what they are. Ask yourself, is this working or not? And then if it's not working, be willing to make adjustments. Because one of the things that we can do is we can become so delusional in our own bubble that we lose touch with reality. And this is why having some people around you to go, hey, have you thought about that? Do you see that? Do you see this? That can help you to at least have a clear picture. And these are trusted voices in your life. And these are people that have earned the right to speak into your life. Um, that doesn't just happen. I wouldn't recommend pulling somebody off the street and going, hey, give me your give me your opinion. I wouldn't do that. I think the decisions that I have to make are too important. And so um, I'm observing, that's the O in it. And then the N is simply just deciding that you're never going to quit. That you know, no matter what, um, no matter what happens, I'm going to give the best that I can to this goal or this dream. Because I, I truly believe at the end of our life um, that we will look back and say, hey, it's not so much about what I did do. I think it's more about what I didn't do that I knew I could have or should have. And that's just one of the things that, that kind of helps to fuel me. I say it a lot. Regret is not going to be a part of my vocabulary. I don't want to say, hey, I wanted to go here, but I never did. Uh, I wanted to uh, acquire this, but I didn't do it. I, I wanted to achieve this, but I didn't. I don't want to look back and go, the reason I didn't achieve it is just because I didn't try. I don't want to do that. And so just deciding, hey, I'm never going to quit. There's always going to be a process of forward movement to help me to get to where it is uh, that I want to go. I think in that, all of that, um, that's yeah. where you find ways of staying focused when it looks like there's so much chaos going on. Yeah, and then helping the, the people that are around you that are in your close circle that you see are in division and somehow creating an atmosphere and a place where people can come together and have open, honest, responsible communication like we talk about all the time mm -hmm. and saying this is where I stand on it and I'm going to be open and I'm going to be compassionate. And even Amber said a little while ago, having empathy for someone, I'm going to have empathy for you and I'm going to understand your side and looking at all sides of things. There's not always two sides to everything. There can be a hundred, 10, whatever. And being open and saying, you know what, let's have some really good raw communication on this and be respectful to one another and having that agreement moving forward like this is I'm, I want to see it how you see it so that we can stay connected and this thing right here is not going to drive us apart we're not going to allow that our relationship is too important for something like this to drive us apart and for you to go on a downward spiral or me to go on a downward spiral yeah and it's funny so somebody it's, mentioned this to me the other day they're like you know if, if you buy into negativity for too long it's like you become negative but then the other side of it though is that if you are in agreement if you have something called it's called covenant um, Pat Riley talked, he was a coach in the NBA, but he talked about that crisis creates covenant. And sometimes when you go through crisis, that very crisis is the thing that creates a covenant for you to say, hey, we're going to do this. We're never going to quit. We're going to keep working no matter what. The crisis creates covenant. And so instead of running from crisis and going, oh my God, this is bad. It should never be this way. And we must be doing something wrong. What you do during the time of the crisis is you go, okay, what can we do better? What can we do different? And have some people you can ask. I How often do I ask you what I can do better? Like every day, just about. I do, honestly, I ask. Like, and do you think I believe you? I mean, I mean it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing that I was taught, is you have to ask people that you care about, what could I do better? Is there something that you see that I don't see? And I could ask you guys, if you're watching this, when's the last time you've ever done that? When's the last time you've asked someone on your job, somebody not just for the sake of gaining a greater position, but when's the last time you've asked somebody that, that um, you know, that you care about, what do you see I could do better? What well, can I, I do better? Oh, it, I know. I don't ask that question enough because then, it, well, you, then you, you get immediately, you get to, you I know that. that is one thing I could do better. <laughs> kill me. I kill me. <laughs> You're so good. Oh, oh God. This <laughs> and guy. I am Wonder Woman, Gail. Right? What? You said I wasn't Wonder Woman. Oh, you're better than Wonder Woman. She was, she was, she was powerful, but she's I'm not you. Gal, she's not you. I'm Gal Gadot in my... You know, I don't even know who that is. She plays Wonder Woman. That's in, right. In the movies now. But she's not you, trust me. Um, so anyway, <laughs> yes. But asking <laughs> for, I don't know. Oh, I, I, I don't do that enough. You know why? Because like it, it immediately you have to put a mirror in front of your face and go, you know what? This is what I, it's got to change. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is something that I have to look at. 
straight on and nobody's going to do it for me. Yeah. You can't. That's hard. Nobody gets to do your personal Sucks. work for you, right? It's personal. We always say it like this. All personal development must be personal, which means you got to face the, the dragon that's deep within you, right? Like you got to be willing to dive in that cave. And if that yeah. means that you have fear of abandonment, that people are going to leave you, and so you wind up being a people pleaser, own that, right? Start talking about that. Um, start sharing that when you're in having good conversations. You have to have conversations about things. Like, if your conversations are no deeper than, oh, what are you doing today? Okay, cool. You're doing all right? Yeah, good. And it's the same old stuff. Like, you're just not going to grow. You're just not. You're just going to be complacent. You're going to be casual with your approach to life. And um, you know, you don't have to, not, not every conversation has to be an intense conversation at all because that gets old in and of itself, but you at least got to be willing to have those, right? And so, um, being willing to put yourself out there, ask for some feedback. Um, Mr. Clemmer used to say feedback is the breakfast of champions. If you can't handle feedback, you won't be able to handle the success. Um, if you want your marriage to be, uh, successful, you, you got to ask for feedback. If you want to be better in the marriage, ask for feedback. Like, be honest. And then when somebody tells you that, even if you disagree with it, don't, don't get your feelings hurt. It's the old saying, if you get offended with every rub, how can you ever expect to be polished? Mm -hmm. And I think we want to be polished. I think we want to be better. And um, I, I think that requires more than just our own perspective of ourselves. And so uh, that's a big thing as far as it pertains to growth and, and getting better. Um, okay, getting out of the mirror. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, yeah. And get, getting out of the mirror. Oh, that's, that's what the work is. That's why... We do what we do, that's why he's done this for over a decade, like just helping people understand that it's not a bad thing to pick up a mirror and go, this is me and it's okay, okay yeah. but this is what's gotta change. So, this and, is how we have to move forward. And let me let me say this to you also. Um, I, well, it's just, I forget it. I, I know, I know, I know. I have to write my stuff um, I do, I, <laughs> yes. Um, the mirror that we stand in front of tells us the story. Yeah. But it is not the whole story. And it's not so the this, end. It's not the end. So you yeah. got to be very careful picking the mirror up. John Maxwell used to say you need the M&Ms in life. You need a mirror and you need a mentor. A mirror will tell you where you're at. A mentor will show you and help you to see where it is that you could possibly go. And so that's something to consider. So if I look in the mirror and I go, oh, I don't like this about myself. I can change this. I, that doesn't mean that that's the end result And that doesn't forever. mean physically it, it doesn't. It, not. But there's so much more to it. And so um, you just want to look beyond just what you see on the surface. And that's where I think the work of growth really has to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody that's on here today, you want to grow. Like, you know, I, I think you do. I, and, you know, when we're kids, it's okay to eat Fruit Loops and sugar all the time. But I think that then it comes to a point where you're like, all right, I got to start eating better. I got to be healthier. I got to think long term. And that's, that's where you look in the mirror and yes, this is what I see, but it, that's not the whole story. And so, you know, just because you see something right now that you don't like, don't beat yourself up so much that you then don't want to keep moving beyond what you see in the mirror. Staying inspired and staying motivated and staying on purpose, it requires seeing beyond what you see in the mirror. Use the mirror as a checkpoint. This is where I'm at right now. This is what's going on. Be honest with yourself about it. This is what's happening in my relationship. This is how I would rate my relationship on a scale of one to 10. My finances, this is where we're at right now. This is where we wanna be with income. Where are we, right? There's that. What's my, my physical health look like? Do I have a routine? I'm taking care of myself. What's that on a scale of one to 10? What's my spiritual walk look like? Scale of one to 10. At least weigh it out and say, okay, then if I'm a six on a scale of one to 10, What's one or two things that I could assimilate into my life this week that could take me to a seven? And I don't think you're ever going to be a perfect 10 in everything. Mm -hmm. I think that's a delusional thing to yeah. consider. Um, and, but I do think that you can continually get better and better and better. And so in any area. And that's what the mirror can do for us. So it tells a story, but not the whole story. So, um, yeah, that's it. Anything else that you want to do so or we can be out? Um, we got a big day. I've been doing this all week. <laughs> well, we I gotta, love it. We got to get ready for the launch in a little bit. We got to go watch the NASA yeah. launch. I'm like a kid in the candy yeah, store. I right know. Now. So excited. Yeah. Um, but um, so so before we all go, make sure if you want to have access um, to the uh, emerge, emerge virtual. virtual. Emerge Virtual coming up on uh, June 19th. It's a Friday. You can go to RonnieDoss.com forward slash events if you want to register for it. But if you share on here by next, next Saturday. Saturday, we will do a drawing for a free access for the day. Yep. So that's there. It's ready on the website for you to go. But next, next Saturday, we will do the drawing. Make sure your post is public so that we can see that you shared it. And then we'll draw next Saturday for that. Yep. Yeah, um, free access to June 19th. 
Yeah, and Peter just said something really, really good. Oh, um, such a love Peter hate. said oh. that the mirror is a love hate relationship for me. You gotta want it though. It's like you gotta be there. You gotta, you, you have to be ready for it. Yeah, you, I think you guys are ready. Yeah, the thing that that's so helpful for us guys is to realize the two strongest motivators in our life are pain and pleasure. And so when you look in the mirror and it causes pain, that, that can be a great motivator for you. Yeah. And then the vision part that we talked about in the very beginning, that can be the pleasure part for you. What's it gonna feel like? What will it be like? What will it look like when? I achieve the goal that I say that I want to have. And it's finding, I, I read this recently in, in some notes that I've taken, and it said that, that success is about the balance between intent and surrender. There's a balance between intent and surrender, meaning commitment and surrender. Surrender means that you, you trust the process, you give yourself to it, you don't lose your marbles every time something doesn't look the way that you wanted it to look. So there's, there's that. Um, uh, Harrison said, I love the mirror. That's my nephew. He's a handsome little fella. Not the as mirror. handsome as his uncle, oh. but he says, I love the mirror. Um, but it is, it is a love-hate relationship, but it is the balance yeah. of intention and surrender. Surrendering to the process and saying, hey, I know I'm going to get better. I know this is going to work out. Let me hold the vision. Um, and then, you know, trusting it. And then the other part of staying on it and just going, no, I got to do this right now. There's finding that, um, the, the middle ground of that and creating that balance is so, so important. And if you don't create the balance, you're not gonna find balance because your brain, the way it works, is we are so much of an all-in, all-or-nothing kind of people. And that is that if, if I wanna do something, I do it and I forget about everything else. Well, that's not creating balance. And so you gotta find that middle ground and create the balance that you say uh, that you want. So with that, we're done. Um, guys, if you enjoyed this today, please share it. Just hit share on the thing. That helps us a lot. And then the podcast, we, I think I put out a couple episodes this past week, Ronnie mm -hmm. Doss on iTunes. Listen Emerge. to that. Um, Emerge podcast. It's the Emerge podcast. And if you weren't on here at the beginning, a win that we just shared, we love to start this with having, with sharing a win or something that you're grateful for this week. We are in the process of starting a new podcast called Relationship Matters because mm -hmm. healthy relationships matter. That's right. like our tagline. So that's in the process of being uh, created and we're rolling, like, it we're rolling it out soon. And we've got to, we're recording episodes, whatever. We're just so anyway, look out for that too. We'll let you know when it's out, of course. Yep. So so Justin said start a watch party. We're gonna start oh, a watch starting, party in a minute. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So again, will you guys please? It just helps us out if you share this. It that's the the so back. That's only request we have. And you can tag us on it too. That way we'd see it. So yeah. That's like double. So you know. wonderful. Thank you. And Linda says there's an old lady living in my mirror. Well, I, I, I know, but well, you're like wine. You're getting better as you get older. That's true, right? What, what a friend of mine always said, he said, it's easy to get older. It's not easy to get better. Yeah. But uh, we're doing the work, I think, to be better because, hey, there's there's a generation that's following us. And so anything we can do to, to, to make a difference, right? So anyway, you guys are amazing. Thanks for today being with us. I hope you yeah. have a phenomenal rest of your day. God bless you guys. We're out. Bye. Bye.